Greetings and salutations, my lovely loonies. It is a wonderful day. The birds are chirping. I have my coffee and we are speaking on religion today. That is correct, my lovely loonies. We are speaking on Amani and mine's experiences and past and how we ended up where we are within our religious journey. And I want you guys to be able to sit back, relax and enjoy. The train will derail a few times. There will be a couple of technical difficulties, but sadly, you really can't fix Wi-Fi if it decides that it wants to go out. But we were able to work around that and get a very beautiful podcast made for all of you. So I just ask that you sit back, chillax, and enjoy the episode. All right, so today we are talking about religion and our journeys within them and how we have religion. gotten to where we are. <laughs> yeah, it's a long journey. But did you, I don't know about you, but I started off as a kid being Catholic. I started off as And being somehow Baptist. got to pagan. Baptist. Yes. Baptist church are fun. They're really fun. <laughs> It depends because the one I got, I went to at least with my great grandparents in the South was not so much fun. Like it could still be enjoyable, but when you had to pray away the gay sessions. Oh, yeah, well. (laughs) Yeah, because I had a couple of cousins that were like that. And then as soon as I saw that, I kind of shut down because that for me was the beginning of kind of questioning Christianity just a little bit. Because I just really felt like I couldn't be myself in the religion. It took finding non-denominational churches to realize, okay, so you can be gay and be accepted within Christian outlets. But why do I still feel weird being here? (laughs) Because I still felt weird as fuck being being in a Christian Baptist church or just a church in general. Like the people were nice, the feeling was warm and inviting when I got to non denominational, and it felt a little more welcoming. But I wanted to find something where I could feel that all of the time, not just in certain places, you know? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So, how did you actually get to your journey from being Catholic to pagan? I am curious about that. Um, right. Yeah, so we would go to like just like midnight mass for christmas and just the all day mass pretty much for easter it's an all day kind of thing so with catholic churches it's super boring you just listen to hymns and listen to one guy preach at you for like two hours (laughs) and me and my sisters with adhd my mom would have to like bribe us to sit down (laughs) and (laughs) actually listen and i really liked reading as a kid so eventually i just started reading the bible instead of listening to whatever (laughs) he was saying up at the front um and actually as a kid me and my sisters wanted to be baptized but my mom never really got us into the classes Hmm. like it's, my grandparents are super religious but my mom never really pushed her religion on us which was really nice actually um okay. and it wasn't until about high school when I took humanities class and we started learning about different religions that I actually started getting interested in learning about all of the religions hmm. <laughs> and at one point I had a hyperfixation on it so for like two solid months I was just research a whole bunch of different religions and from there, I kind of came to the conclusion that organized religion isn't my thing. Because <laughs> it's all used for wars and to control people. But I still true. kind of felt spiritual. You know what I mean? Like, it yeah. felt like there was something out there. And so that's when I started looking at pagan religions. Because they're more focused on the spirituality than how to practice and using that practice okay. to control other people. Okay, that's kind of a quick overview of it okay because yeah that that was one reason why I felt uncomfortable and why I just knew that I still wanted a religion and why I still want one is because I am religious uh, not religious spiritual but mm-hmm. it just felt really weird being in the religion because I was like you really young kind of into it because my great-grandparents would take me to church every single Sunday 
Mm -hmm. And of course, we would be there for the Easter services, the Christmas services. They normally weren't as long. The only one that lasted a really long time was the New Year service. And I think I only went to that maybe once or twice. And then they stopped forcing me to go because they realized right. having a kid be there for like five hours doing nothing but hearing people preach and everything is not a good Just idea. Work. Yeah. Like we we get impatient, we get tired, we get cranky. It's like, I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. Are we going to eat? Like, I remember sitting there like, are we not eating? Am I just sitting here until New Year's ring, starving and just <laughs> waiting for this to be over? <laughs> it's a terrible way to bring in the new year. <laughs> oh, yeah. Very <laughs> shitty. I re remember the first time I got to do it as just a normal kid and just have fun at like a sleepover or just like go outside and watch the fireworks go off and then go to bed or watch a twilight zone marathon that was the best one for me <laughs> that, those were yeah. my fun ones. <laughs> being stuck inside of a church was not fun for me ever yeah not the ones at church yeah no i do no. remember that no, I, never did, was. I don't know i did get baptized though i do remember that because i did tell my grandmother that and she was a hundred percent all for it so of course i did get baptized so i can't say that i have been but and when i did it i did feel like i was a part of the church like i could finally be accepted and stuff like that but it's still i know i'm gonna keep saying it throughout all of this but it it still just felt weird to me because it felt like i had to be forced to do these sort of things to be a hundred percent accepted and Instead of just saying that, okay, so I want to be a witch and learning these things, or I want to be pagan and learning these things and getting more so indoctrinated by knowledge and being taught, instead of just feeling like I have to be forced to do it, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you also get more answers in pagan, like learning from that. Than you do like with with the church at least for me it was like this is how it is and we don't ask questions exactly and if you I, did ask a question you got platitudes yeah yep and it always came down to well jesus loves you and that's all that matters <laughs> like <laughs> does he though <laughs> so i feel like he's supposed to have unconditional love but if we can sin and go to hell and be excluded from his kingdom it seems pretty conditional to me and it's and a good chunk of this is like i can understand like the really darker ones of rape murder and yeah just truly stealing for the sake of stealing yeah not even for a necessity or a need because i know there are certain people that steal just because they need to feed their families they need to help their yeah. child get medication and stuff like that and it's why you see that a lot of bad guys in certain movies nowadays aren't 100% bad. They're just looking for a way to actually find a, a, a mean to their end. Like, right. I, I know this is a really weird one, but the um, Batman villain, Dr. Freeze, the only thing he uh -huh. wants to do is to get enough money to cure his wife from her deadly blood disease. That's the only yes. reason he's a villain. Once he gets that, I'm quite sure he will stop doing crime and just be with his wife and deal with the compli the repercussions of whatever he did. He just wants his wife to be okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Those and, are always my favorite villains. And like, I know he's still doing bad things, but does that mean that even with his altruistic vision that he should still go to hell because he still has the purest intentions at heart doing what he's doing. It's not like he's just saying, oh, I just want to do this for the sake of doing it. It's like, I want, I actually want to save my life. Yeah, there's just so much gray area. There's too much interpretation for me. There's too many people that can interpret it in different ways to make it make sense yeah you know and also the fact that the bible just it just for something that's supposed to be from someone that's all-knowing it seems like it gets outdated very fast you think the things that he would say would be able to carry throughout 
eons, seeing as he could see that far into the future. But mm-hmm. he, <laughs> there's so many things in the Bible, like especially in just like the little parts with like rules that are super outdated. Like about there's, I'm pretty sure there's something in there about <laughs> selling your children for livestock so that you can eat. I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. No. Pretty sure that's it. Is that in the Old Testament or the New Testament? Because Christianity Old for sure. Then that is more of the Judaism instead of actual Christianity. Most Christianity goes by the New Testament instead of the Old. That's one thing I've learned just a little yeah. bit. So I guess that is a little less because even in like the Judaic where or um the Torah there is of you know non-monogamy because the husbands could have more than one wife and things of that nature so that's a little bit more into that culture as well where you and I may feel a little more comfortable with but not everybody else but we're more pagan and I guess that's where the off branch sort of actually begins to show itself for why we feel more comfortable where Mm -hmm. we because yeah, I just don't think it feels right that, because I do get that you can repent and that you can say mm. that the wrong things that you've done, but what if you have to do a similar wrong thing again for a different reason, but it's still for a good reason? I know you can still keep repenting, but if you know you may have to continue to do it, then what good is it? Does God still know that you're being sincere? Or God, does God stop listening once he sees you continue to do so? Right. And especially like with people who are genuinely doing it for a bad reason are repenting. Does that mean exactly. they also get to go to heaven? <laughs> it's always that like age old question. Like people always say like, Hitler was a Christian. And so if he repented for all of his sins. Would he still get to go to heaven? Or does all of his bad things still outweigh his good? Exactly. Maybe that's how it is. The good inside you outweighs whatever sin you've done. I don't know. Then that reminds me more of the TV show The Good Place where um, it works more on the checks and balances of the good and the bad that you do and you get points for each thing that you do. Right. Where your good points could potentially outweigh your bad points, which means you go to the good place, a.k.a. heaven. Or if your bad points outweigh your good, then you go to the bad place. And mm-hmm. there was even a contro- there was even a controversy inside of the own TV show itself of what if the good place is being rigged? What if the point system is rigged and only certain people get to go to the good place? Mm-hmm. Because there are certain people who in that series realize, because this shouldn't be spoilers because I think either the season has ended or it's far enough that you already know this. But if so, this is spoilers. Mm-hmm. But there are certain people who realize the point system or realize what it was because of doing something stupid in their life, like a really high drug overdose or whatever the case may be, was able to tell what the entire point system was and lived exactly by that, but somehow still doesn't have enough points to get into the good place if they died. Mm-hmm. And that was the biggest controversy. And that's what made them want to actually do a checks and balances more of it and do a controlled setting to see what could actually happen. If the quote unquote bad people of the world could actually be rehabilitized to become good people and actually be go be able to go to the good place or is the good place rigged so awfully that they still wouldn't be able to go? Huh. Yeah, because I... I uh think i watched the first two episodes of that but that's interesting and even with knowing the spoiler it's still a good season it's still a good oh yeah tv series to go and watch because you still don't even know how you get there like i didn't even tell you everything that happens like that is just a tiny synopsis of just what we're talking about that's still not even speaking into anything else that's going on And what's funny is that I'm kind of in the background 
sadly you might have heard a little bit of the American Dad TV show that was going on, but I'm watching the episode where Stan thought it was okay dressed as Santa Claus to fight Roger dressed as Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> and he's now been excommunicated from the church for doing so. Do you think that is something that is smart to happen? <laughs> Just for something that stupid? <laughs> Maybe that's kind of the point of that episode. It's like, at what, po- at what point do you draw the line? And who gets to tell you where that line is? You know, who do you trust? The leaders of your church or your own judgment? Cause, or... Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. I guess that depends on your relationship with God at that point. But it it's true? just too much ambiguity. Like, ambiguity, whatever you call it. Yeah. Cause, I just yeah. feel like pagan religions are just a lot more simple. They're like, you want to do this? We'll do this. <laughs> you want to do that go ahead and do that and of course if you are a bad person within it you still do have your repercussions for doing something. yeah you still have your karmic repercussions for sure but i i feel like i believe more in the karmic checks and balances of you know good and bad because i do believe in good karma and i do believe in bad karma i do believe in paying it forward when it comes to certain things like that you know oh yeah yeah, definitely. In, in did you have a ch- say again? I was just say, did you have a chance to watch any of those links that I sent for the last one? Sadly, I did not. My tiny one was screaming in my ear too much, and any time it wasn't, you know, his normal little songs and stuff, he would start to get upset and just kind of frown at me. Oh. Like, what the heck is this shit? I don't want to. Like, watch what are you listening this? to? <laughs> He like, has I don't to understand these words. <laughs> it's like, I know, but don't you want to get to understand these words? Ah! It's like, no. <laughs> yep, pretty much. <laughs> no. And I guess that's also another thing that I am wondering about is when it comes to my son, because I want him mm-hmm. to be able to have his own religious comfortability. Mm-hmm. I don't want him to feel like he has to go towards mine or towards his father's. Right. And I know for Curtis is going to be a really uncomfortable thing for him, for me to start to dive into this a little bit more. He wants me to talk to his sister who knows a little bit more about just christianity religion and god itself because she has gotten really deep into studying that oh yeah i don't mind talking to her about it because i know with her i won't get platitudes i'll just get answers yeah but for me it's still just i don't mind learning more about it and understanding it but i also know where i really want to learn and where i want to actually have my religion come from And I think that's the thing that is uncomfortable for him because he knows I'm already dead set. And he wants to see if there's a way that he can find for me to not be as dead set as I am. Because of course him in the more pure sense of Christianity is just worried about my soul. Right. I know for him, it's just, he's worried about my soul. He's not mad that I'm going somewhere else. He's just worried for me. And I think it's really sweet, but at the same time, I don't think he's really understanding me and where I want to be. Right. Yeah, that's the thing with a lot of Christians. Like, they're so worried about your soul, but, like, if I don't believe in the same religion as you, then How is that my doesn't soul? mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think that's hard for Christians is to get out of their head that it might not be true and that other religions might be true and that other people can study those religions just in case, you know, or that that works for you or that every religion that is out here is actually true in its own way and that there is a particular heaven and hell for everybody, but it's not the same exact one. Why does there have to be just only one? Yeah like have you have you read the percy jackson books 
I have read them a little bit, but I, I'm sorry to say it to all of those out there. I have only <laughs> mostly seen the movies and not read the books. Ooh. Percy Jackson was not one of the books I read growing up. That was for me, um, the immortal series and also reading James Patterson. Um, uh, I just, it slipped my mind. The Maximum Ride series, the James Patterson oh, Maximum, Maximum Ride. Ride. Yeah, those were my books growing up. So I kind of skipped out on the Percy Jackson series a little bit. I am sorry to everybody out there. <laughs> That's okay. They are very good books, though, if you ever do want to pick them up. Um, and they're really easy reads. But there's an idea in there, because like the whole idea is they, they do the Greek gods. And if you get further into the series, also the Roman gods. Um, okay. And they do end up going down um, into Hades later at some point. And there's a there's a good part in it where um, they're like standing in line waiting to get into Hades. Is that what they call it? Underworld. Yeah. The underworld. The underworld. Okay. And they're like looking around at all these people. And um, Percy asks his friend Annabelle, like, all these people do they all see the greek gods because they're getting judged by the snails and all that and um annabelle goes well no depending on um hold on you're breaking up really loud again. They in, it's what they see when they're down there okay and for uh, those who couldn't quite hear her she was talking about how in the underworld when they were standing in line waiting for everybody percy asked if they would see the greek gods and annabelle said no it depends on what the religion is and what god they actually see yeah okay oh that is so, actually uh, really good it's a, yeah i was thought that was an interesting mm -hmm. idea it's like that way people still were able to worship whatever they wanted to worship Okay, that is and still I think goes you know. Okay, see, I actually like that concept a little bit better that you can still worship any religion, and whatever religion you worship is the gods and goddesses that you see, or just God, depending on yeah. what your religion is. <laughs> right. Yeah, and that's kind of always what I thought too. Is like maybe it's that all of these religions do. I would like and whenever you die you just go to whatever realm you believed in and for every religion that is out there i really do hope that that is truly a thing because i wouldn't want any one religion to feel lesser than the other because i honestly yeah. feel that every religion should be equal you shouldn't just be pagan you shouldn't just be wicked you shouldn't just be christian or catholic or baptist or judaic or islamic or whatever your case is i know i'm forgetting dozens of religions the, don't get me wrong i know i'm forgetting quite a few there are bunches so but you really should be able to worship and believe in whatever you believe it shouldn't be so hard and so difficult for you to feel feel like you belong and like you should still mm -hmm. be accepted no matter what you are and those who just believe in nothing at all there should still be a place for them because regardless of anything they're still good they're still good atheists there are still oh, yeah. kind-hearted atheists if anything it feels like they're the nicer people of the world because they believe in nothing what their good sense comes from just them being good, being good. and being a nice person i was actually gonna make that point too yeah I forget where I kind of heard that, but yeah, it's like, what what use does God have for atheists? It's like, just to show that you can be nice to be nice, not because of any ulterior motive, you know? Exactly, and I think that should just be a thing for everybody, no matter your religion or what you're doing or what you believe in, that you should just be a decent person, be a nice person, just know that what you're doing can bleed off onto others no matter what's going on because mm -hmm. say I'm having a really bad day because of something that someone did to me instead of 
you know, throwing that onto the next person that comes my way, I could honestly just be a little bit nicer even through my pain because they could be having a rough day themselves and just need one nice person to say one decent thing to them to give them an extra boost because that happened to me the other day I was really annoyed I was really cranky I was having a really bad day I just needed some peace I was going over to McDonald's to pick up some food for me and Curtis and I was just really cranky I didn't want to deal with anybody but I saw they were busy and I saw this one girl that just had kept having to run back and forth. All I did was compliment her on her hair and open the door for her the couple of times that she had to keep running out. But that still made all the difference in the world for her because she still smiled and she was still very grateful uh, about just a small little thing that I did because I didn't have to do it. I didn't, yeah. have to be, I didn't have to be as patient as I was being that day. I didn't have to be anything but what I felt but I still chose to just be nice and so me being nice paid it forward and gave somebody else a little bit more of a push to continue through their day that's all that needed to be done <laughs> you know it's like and I didn't do it because I thought it would get me closer to yeah. being in the heaven or being closer yeah, to anything really else no matter who yeah yeah, like yeah, I was like, that reminds me of. Also, don't know where I saw it, but like, he, like judging people on their character, like the shopping cart theory, like, mm. um, because as a shopping cart, do you put it away after you load your car or not? Because you're not gonna have any consequences for it. No one's gonna stop you and yell at you for not throwing it or putting it back in the little receptacle thing. And there's no consequences either way. So do you feel nice enough to actually put it in there for the employees or do you just leave it in the middle of the parking lot for someone else to do? Honestly, if I'm close enough, I put it back in the store. <laughs> if I'm close <laughs> enough to it, I just You're put really it back nice in the store. <laughs> Either that or I just grab all of my groceries, push the cart in right back where it is, and then I just leave out with my groceries. It's like, yeah. it's not that far of a walk. And for me, I live right across the street, so there's no reason for me to just even wheel it to the end of the parking lot, especially if I don't have anything heavy. I just carry all of my stuff. Mm -hmm. In my mind, I'm just giving myself a mini workout, and I'm making it easier on them because I see how many times they have to wrangle shopping carts from the end of the lot. And there will be times Gosh. where I'll, I'll grab them and push them to like at least one of the closer ones that has at least a semi-full one because... I I just see the difficulty they got to deal with. And I'm just one of those people. I'm not saying everybody has to do that, but yeah. it would be cool just to make it just a little bit easier on them because they're already dealing with a hell of a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially right now, labor shortage and you know. all. Oh, definitely. Because of COVID, nobody really wanting to work. Everybody being too scared to want to go out and work because the Delta variant now has its own variant, which I think is just called Delta variant plus. <laughs> and people are just pissed off and scared about that now. So it's just making everything a lot more difficult. And I guess just the difficulty of the world is the biggest trial to want to just care more about yourself and not care anymore. Cause when I remember when the pandemic first started, and how greedy and selfish everyone was being, trying to wipe out the store of hand sanitizer, wipes, disinfectant spray, toilet paper, paper towels, shopping Everything. carts, toilet store. paper. Ugh. People selling bottles of hand sanitizer for like a hundred dollars, half full, half full, and still trying to sell it for that much because they figured somebody would be desperate enough to buy it because those who desperately needed it couldn't get it. Couldn't get masks at all. Yeah. Like The way everything was at the beginning of the pandemic was absolutely deplorable. Insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's saying it makes yes. you realize it makes you realize the true nature of people, you know. <laughs> kind of like an apocalyptic event <laughs> any of those movies where you just see people turn on each other start looting getting everything not caring about yeah. anyone their counterparts 
Hell, certain people may not even care about certain family members or their own family and just start doing things yeah. to survive. And, and then it just confuses me and it really upsets me that, you know, that honestly happened, especially in this day and age when this was a really such a time for all of us to be able to come together. And it only seemed like it really started to happen once people were indoors, couldn't leave or do anything. And now that people are finally out and about again, it seems like the care for certain things have just kind of shortened out, depleted once again. And it makes no sense to me. It's like, how come when all you have to do is sit at home, you can care about stuff. Why can't you care about certain things all the time? Why does it, why now that you have your distractions again, do you just choose to ignore everything going on again? And I'm not saying that's everybody going on, that everybody out there is doing this, but it's still enough that it still, it still hurts. It's still confusing and very upsetting to me. It makes no sense to me. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just because people were sitting at home and they felt like they had the time to actually invest into it. And now, like you said, they're back to their normal life. So it doesn't feel as close. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. But it's still just. We got really off topic, didn't we? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. I have a feeling that's going to happen a lot. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> please excuse us we did get off topic just a bit but that will happen from time to time um i do believe we will take a short break and be right back all right lovely loonies we are back and i know we did get a little bit off the off the rails a little bit you're just gonna have to love us for it <laughs> <laughs> Two ADHD people talking that's gonna happen <laughs> it's gonna happen quite a bit yes <laughs> <laughs> But we do want to talk a little bit to you guys about why we really truly or what was the straw that broke the camel's back for us, like why we fully decided that the religions that we were grown up on are no longer the things that we are truly in anymore, because I know that for me. It was honestly just seeing how at times my family would treat my mom because she was known as like the wild child and everything like that. And of course, a lot of it did have to be with just the toxic nature of my family and saying, you got to do these certain things for me to just help you out anymore. Mm -hmm. But I've always just believed if you need help, then let me give you that hand. It doesn't matter what's going on. It should still I should still be helping, right? Because that was always the thing that I had learned in Christianity to just help those no matter what else happens to you. And I guess you do have to pick and choose your battles when you do get older, but at the end of the day, especially when it comes to family and you know that family members hurting, shouldn't that Christian value still kind of ring true to just help others as you would want to be helped, treat others as you would want to be treated? So why is it that this one person is now getting treated so poorly because of the things they're doing? I get that they're not treating everyone else the same way, but shouldn't that still not ring to you? Shouldn't you still be wanting to do your absolute best? Yeah. And that's what, and that's what made me kind of give up on it a little. Cause I just, I couldn't accept that anymore. I couldn't just deal with that anymore. And that's when I really started to go out and search and look for something that felt more comfortable for me and felt like it felt like it was actually good all the way around. And if you, and if it said that it did these things then these things would still ring true, Mm. you know? Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Kind of in the same boat. I, kind of in the wild child so um just I guess also growing up I never really felt accepted in the church in general it was never something that I kind of related to and that's what kind of led me to research other religions but kind of what 
did it for Christianity for me is while I was in the middle of researching, um, my friend sat and she went to a non-denominational church. So I started to go with her. Um, hmm. And it just like, I, I let them know that I was just there because I just wanted to learn more about it. But the entire time I was there, they kept trying to push me to convert to Christianity instead of trying to teach me about it. And Mm. (laughs) the kids there just seemed kind of judgy and stuck up kind of thing. And then when I turned 18, uh, my friend took me out to a strip club because, you know, you're 18. You're allowed to go into those things now. So we went to like the lion's den and a strip club. She paid for a stripper for me. (laughs) It was actually (laughs) super fun. And then the next time she went to that church, they, I guess they gave her a whole bunch of shit for it, saying that they were helping me sin and um, that they didn't think that we should be friends because I wasn't a good influence on her and stuff like that. So she ended up actually quitting that church too. And that kind of sealed the deal with Christianity for me. Wow. Yeah, I, that is why would you make someone feel guilty for just but she was the one that took you right but that one doesn't make any sense to me like why would you judge someone so much for just going out and enjoying their life and bringing a friend with them and you're both of 18 and of the age of being able to make decisions for yourself Oh, sorry, you kind of broke up on me. You want to repeat that for me? Sorry, I was <laughs> um, I was saying that that just seemed a little messed up to just judge your friend so much about, like, just wanting to take you and her out for a nice little fun time. It yeah. wasn't like It wasn't like you coerced her or she coerced you. It seems like it was just like, a, hey, you want to go do this for your birthday? Oh, yeah, sure. Why not? Let's go type of thing yeah it's fun we're doing a team yeah I guess they give her a lot of shit for it but and it wasn't even like my she planned it for me and she didn't even get like a stripper herself or anything it was all like for me it wasn't even something she was into but yeah they they decided that I was a bad influence on her so oh, well. <laughs> they were giving her shit for it um so what happened yeah. after that after that she ended up quitting that church um she still believes in god and everything but she didn't really join another one and for me it just led me more into exploring other religions instead of trying to get to know christianity even more because it it seemed like it was definitely not a good fit for me in general um so i actually started to get into like satanism at that point like church of satan satanism because there's different kinds of satanism too that is true Uh, not all are bad yeah because i will admit found that i actually sorry you go ahead i didn't mean to cut you off it's okay i was just saying that um, i found that i related more with the leviathan satanism principles than i ever did with christianity because i don't know if you've ever read their 11 commandments but i have not what are they're they're pretty cool here i'll look it up and read it so uh. and yeah and just to speak on a little bit of satanism that i do know i do know that a lot of them aren't bad i do know that i found out for a lot they do respect the um the will and the independence of a woman and of a female and that Mm -hmm. i did actually find very refreshing i still don't know if that would be the one that i would go into but i did find out that that was actually pretty refreshing to figure out because i like everybody have had at least within christianity and other people just we all think it's negative when it comes to that yeah yeah it's it's just oh you worship the devil how dare you get the hell out of my house you're over here making like sacrifices and shit like that and that's all always what i thought it was and to realize that that's not the truth no not at all yeah so like i said there's different forms of satanism so there is the form that everyone practice human sacrifice and all that but that Mm -hmm. is actually almost exclusively 
uh, tied to like teenagers who are rebelling against their parents. It's actually mm. not even really an accepted form of Satanism for most people who are into it. Um, the the type of Satanism that I know the most about is called Leviathan Satanism. It's made by this guy who used to be a member of the circus and decided to quit one day and make, make this religion. <laughs> and it's basically just he made it as a complete opposite of Christianity, like total opposite. He just didn't really like Christianity. So he decided to make an anti-Christian religion. So actually what's interesting that most people don't realize is that they don't actually worship the devil. So they believe in Satan solely as an idea of free will. But if you think about it, Satan is still a church creation it's just the opposite of god so as a religion that's completely anti-christianity they wouldn't believe in satan they just use him as a figurehead to kind of make christians angry (laughs) (laughs) that's essentially what it is like most of that religion is just literally to make christians angry and to celebrate your own free will in doing things so like I have like I have their their commandments pulled up so the first one is do not give opinions or advice unless you're asked Hmm. uh the second one do not tell your troubles to others unless you're sure they want to hear them um third one when in another's layer show him respect or else do not go there (laughs) the fourth some of these some of these are a little iffy but most of them are cool this one is kind of funny for me. It's uh, if a guest in your lair annoys you, treat him cruelly and without mercy. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of um, do that of my own free will anyway. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Some of these are just kind of like common sense. Like this one, uh, number five, do not make sexual advances unless you're given the mating signal. <laughs> I love how these are worded too. Oh, uh number six do not take that which does not belong to you unless it's a burden to the other person and he cries out to be relieved okay. <clears throat> hmm. uh seven acknowledge the power of magic if you have employed it successfully to obtain your desires if you deny the power of magic after having called upon it with success you will lose all you have atta- obtained so common sense yeah um <clears throat> ugh, my throat all right, eight, do not complain about anything to which you need not subject yourself. Uh, and nine, pretty basic, do not harm little children. <laughs> I love number nine. Number yeah. nine is beautiful. Ten, uh, do not kill non-human animals unless you're attacked or for food. Uh, okay. Eleven, when walking into open territory, bother no one. If someone bothers you, ask him to stop. If he does not stop, destroy him. <laughs> In, I, I'm going to think that means emotionally. <laughs> Any way that you see fit. <laughs> all of these sound very common sense and not what I was expecting. All of them are very obtainable. Yeah, very easy. And they have nothing to do with like respecting a deity. It's all about just how you should live life in general. Yeah, it just sounds like these are commandments to being a person. Yeah. And like just giving you the aspect of because I know it's um one commandment I think is of uh treat thy neighbor with respect or something along those lines. Mm-hmm. And sometimes treating your neighbor with respect should also be if they are screwing up and you know it, still tell them or tell them to at least stop bothering you with their issues. Yeah. Cause, Cause like I do remember at one point a neighbor I had for whatever reason, sorry about the truck going by, that no matter what, they would always just poke their head out the door and complain to me about everything going on with them. And of course, you know, the courteous nature of me and of course, learning the commandments and learning what I did in Christianity, would just sit there and listen to them. And I'm just like, I'm tired. I just want to go home. Yeah. And I remember literally one day I just got fed up with it and just told them to stop talking to me. Mm -hmm. And they got really upset with me. And 
they would just at that point try to be as noisy as they could be any time that I got home to the point to where I actually had to complain to the front office and give them a citation. Like, I don't mind being courteous to you. I don't mind listening to your issues, but you should know the difference between when somebody's getting home and they already look tired and when somebody is just doesn't mind talking to you for the day. <sighs> yeah. And they were like a puppy. They would wait until they would see me through their people to pop their head out. Cause like my keys weren't jingling. You couldn't hear my footsteps half the time. It was just, hey, what's good? Let me tell you about these million things that happened to me today. And you just stayed here for like maybe another hour, even though you were just right at your door with your key signifying you just want to go inside and end your day. <laughs> And it's just, and part of me does feel bad because I was probably the only person to really talk to them, but how they treated it afterward was just a level of, wow, that I could not. It's petty. Yeah. Very petty. The, the pettiness was strong with that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's, I, that's why I appreciate that first commandment there. It's like, if you're not asking for advice or an opinion, please don't give it to me. Like I just... <laughs> yeah <laughs> or just talking to me like don't like, bother me unless I want to be bothered <laughs> yeah if I did not signify that I wanted to in like the 11th commandment if someone is bothering you and does not stop destroy them <laughs> destroy them yeah <laughs> so that was kind of my delve into pagan religions there I know I didn't like I felt more accepted under those kind of rules but it still wasn't fully there for me because there are mm. still some like dark parts of s satanism like you can definitely they definitely believe in hexes and curses a hundred percent like and it's not always like if they deserve it just like if you feel like they deserve it kind of thing and i don't know there's there's some darker parts to that that i didn't really get into but it mm. kind of led me into paganism and wiccan actually was the next thing i studied which, which is a little I bit different is, than which is i guess where the difference is with like paganism and wiccan and the satanism is just you i do know that with paganism and with wicca you, there is, are still hexes and curses but they're huh? actual for people who do deserve it like they are doing truly abhorrable things to people and it just needs to stop type of ordeal not i feel like you yeah. should get this so i'm going to put it on you exactly yeah yeah well sadism is very much about free will so if you feel like that person did you wrong then you are fully free to hex them and it's up to them to the protect, protect themselves it's not um, up to anyone else but like with paganism and like wiccan and witchcraft you tend to get into with wiccan specifically the karmaic rule of three so okay if you hex or send out some kind of spell on someone and they're not deserving of it or if they have themselves protected or if they have protection from ancestors you tend to get that spell blocked and receive it back threefold hmm. sometimes it's 10 depending on the, the the wicked practice you do tenfold or threefold um, okay with witchcraft, there isn't that. They don't believe in that, but it's the same thing. You can still protect yourselves from hexes. And if you have really powerful ancestors, they tend to protect you too. And they'll send they'll send stuff back to senders, what they call them, sending back to sender spells. Okay. Hmm. See, I'm learning so much more. And the more I learn, at least about just witchcraft and Wicca and paganism, the more I fall in love with it because I first started in most are going to laugh at me but seeing charmed and everything and seeing what they did with it and then learning more about it myself and just looking into it as much as I could because it really is hard to find the information which I will still put the information down below in the description for everybody who still is searching and wants to know because for every new person, I want to make sure that you get all the information you can. But it was just more, it sounded more of me, more because mm -hmm. I do enjoy the spirituality. I do enjoy the comfortability that it feels like comes with, um, comes with those religions more than just Christianity, you know? Oh, 
Oh yeah, definitely. You're definitely a lot more. It's a lot more about free will than it is like keeping you under a thumb yeah. <laughs> so that you do good. It's more about you deciding to do good for yourself. Yeah, and I also feel like it's also a little bit of like as well as letting bygones be bygones. Just because you have the free will doesn't mean you should always just. Uh-huh. hurt somebody because you feel it should really matter what exactly the person is doing like there's a difference between somebody just bothering you every single day and just wanting to talk to you and someone completely harassing you wanting your phone number and bugging you every single day and harassing yeah. you to an extremely uncomfortable point to where you don't feel safe those are two right. completely different things Yes, very different. Yeah, there's different levels of transgressions and there should be different repercussions for each of those transgressions. Yes. <laughs> I agree totally. It, yeah, and it's good it's good to also get good information because like wow, witchcraft is now kind of a trendy thing, especially on like TikTok is what I think of when I think of new age over. witchcraft. Yeah. <laughs> I will say it's, I will say there's at least one TikToker who is of the culture and is not just a fad. She actually yeah. gives out advice. Um, do you know of Gibbous Rage? No. Oh, I love I'm her. not good at remembering usernames, so I might have come across one of her videos. Uh, she does a lot of cosplay. At first, she was doing a lot of the uh, Carl the Llama voiceovers. <laughs> actually, I might have seen those. <laughs> yeah, she did a lot of those where, where she was Carl. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Those are fantastic. Carl! Oh, that kills people. Oh, really? I didn't think it would. <laughs> <laughs> I love it so much. Oh, God, they kill me. But yeah, she, I, I do like, because she'll actually give you uh, tips on wording, on actually doing spells, what to actually do when you start off. Like she has an entire series of stuff like that now, and it's G I B B O U S R A G E. For those of you who love TikTok and want to find her, go there. Yeah, I might do it. I might go look at her. <laughs> yeah, because there's that's the bad thing about being trendy is like you got to find real witches because there's a lot of people who are going to capitalize on it just because it's trendy right now and it's making money and like the biggest one that i see is like these love spells that keep coming across tiktok have you gotten those oh my i avoid them like the plague you should there's no such thing as love spells (laughs) you can't you can't create love so like they have these like super trendy ones it's like make him think about me all the time and like those are obsession spells (laughs) yeah i I was about to say there's a difference between love and obsession (laughs) some people don't know the difference (laughs) and those are dangerous like i could feel oh you cut out your voice cut out hold on i i can't hear you i can't hear you like i can't hear you okay i can hear you again okay i had to unplug my headphones and plug them back in what the fuck is that oh Uh, sorry it's the ambulance (laughs) (laughs) sorry about that we'll wait for him to drive by all right someone's in need of an emergency yeah you, you could you can fuck that up real bad you put it on someone who will hurt you if they become obsessed with you or that's how you get a stalker or oh yeah <laughs> or you can do it wrong and they'll send it back to you and now you're obsessed with that person and you don't know why <laughs> and like <laughs> that's that's the first key to me is if if a person has a love spell on their on their page and how to do it stay away from that person <laughs> that's not something you want in your life oh yeah no I don't know yeah, the bad like karma a, that's gonna come from that. Yeah, there's like there's like an affirmation that was really popular. That was like something about saying everything he does, he'll think of me. And when he wakes up, he'll think of me and all that. I was like, whoa, what, what why? Why are people wanting this? <laughs> this no, doesn't that, even sound appealing. <laughs> that that sounds horrible. No, I don't need someone yeah. constantly thinking of me. I know yes. I know I am an attention whore and I need people to pay attention to me, but I have not like that. Yeah, no, not like that. No, that that is that is 
when you do stuff like creating an Instagram to get pay, to get people to pay attention, you're creating a Twitter to be able to get pay, to people to pay attention, mm-hmm. you're making a TikTok and just posting videos and getting a crowd to surround you. That's how you get your attention. Like if you want attention a lot and you want people to talk to you and get to know you, then you need to talk to people and get to know them. Like if you actually, yeah. if you actually want this guy to know you and think about you and talk to you, you got to talk to this guy. So you, so they get to know you and think yeah. about you, but on a healthy level where yes. she's, where they're wondering what you're doing and how you're feeling like the healthy version of that, not the, mm-hmm. I'm going to stalk her for every hour of every day and peek around the corner to hope she's going, no, you don't want that in your no. life no no yeah it's crazy to me how many like girls were on my page doing all that I'm like <laughs> and then I got a couple like later a couple weeks later that was like um using the sound for the affirmation but like muting the sound and being like don't use this I did this now I can't <laughs> get this person away from me it's like yeah <laughs> yeah what, what is for <laughs> now that's you have you, to this is it yeah this isn't Christianity we don't have like child bumpers you know they don't yeah no (laughs) if you do something the universe is going to give it to you and they might make it a lesson for you (laughs) yeah there are no training wheels on spells once it's happened it's happened and now you now have to find a spell to get this person to stop chasing after you Mm -hmm. like this is now what you do that right (laughs) hopefully hopefully you don't mess that up if something awful happens to them and like now you're just sitting here wondering did I just do that you have to now Mm -hmm. find one that just gets them to stop thinking about you and if they stop thinking about you you have to deal with them just avoiding you yeah more than likely so it's just you you set you set yourself up for failure no matter what you've done as soon as you started doing that yeah that's why spell work is something that you should do only when you know quite a bit about the religion that spell work is kind of advanced stuff you don't want to start off doing that kind oh, yeah, of stuff no. which is why quare q u a e r i a is the best place to start for anybody mm-hmm. and especially the youtube links that i had in the previous one i will put in this one as well Mm-hmm. These are the ones that you want to start doing and actually start at an extreme novice level. Yes, very extreme. <laughs> like an extreme novice level. You want to start at the beginnings of the beginning. You don't want to go head first into this, which is why you guys hear me say why well, I'm still studying, while I'm still learning. <laughs> I've been looking for this research. I have not mm-hmm. said I am full fledged. I am in a practice. Mm-hmm. I am still learning everything before I pick. This mm-hmm. is what everyone should want to do if they go into any sort of religion. Do your work, do your studying. If no one, especially if you want to get in Christianity, if no one wants to teach you about God, learn about God yourself. Learn, is this the deity that I want to worship? Is this someone Mm -hmm. that I want to have a closeness to? Is this someone that I want to figure out more about? Don't just go head first into it, just expecting that everything will turn out okay. I used Mm -hmm. to be that person with certain things that I used to do, and they would always blow up in my face. Granted, none of them were religion-based, but it still, but it still rings true that they just blew up in my face because I just didn't know how to actually do them at the beginning. You really do just have to take baby steps, Mm -hmm. small, tiny baby steps. You've got to crawl on this one. You have to crawl. It don't even, this is one where you can't just sprint. You can't be like an actual little baby. You gotta, you gotta crawl first. (laughs) yes yeah most definitely yeah you definitely want your foundation set before you try and do anything crazy i know i got off on a tangent but i felt like that really just had to be said because not yeah. everybody would would think about that because you oh my god you could get yourself in so much trouble just especially so much. especially on tiktok don't follow everything you see on tiktok i gave you one tiktoker you can follow following her will get you open to a lot of other real witches i promise mm-hmm. you because i know there yeah. are a couple that i follow on tiktok but she is the main one that her name just came to mind and 
to everyone out there if you can put your thoughts and prayers for whatever your religion is out to her she's been going through some deep medical stuff and she just Mm -hmm. needs a little help right now so if you can keep your hearts out for her because the last time I saw one of her TikToks she was in a hospital room with like the tubes going in her nose and everything so yeah I don't I haven't been able to follow her series too much on that Mm -hmm. but I'm saying for everyone out there please like keep your hearts keep out her for in her. Mind. Yeah, yeah definitely keep her in mind is sorry for like the downer for a quick second i just oh, remembered okay. that i just remembered no, that she thing. was going through some shit and i just wanted to really get that out there yes yeah, so we'll keep her open there is one more there's oh. one more thing that i want to say something good that you can do for witchcraft that isn't too bad um because like i i'm really bad about losing things all the time constantly when i just have them in my hand (laughs) (laughs) and so there's this one um it's kind of like a prayer i think of i think of what what's the word i think of prayers as like um oh what do they call those like affirmations or um ways to manifest stuff into your life that's what i think manifestations so one of them is like if you're looking for something and you can't find it and you know you just found you just had it like we've all been there it's like i just had this and now it's gone where is it at a lot of times (laughs) you can stop and just ask the universe or whatever deity like can i please have that back and then stop looking for it and you'll be amazed usually within like a half hour or so you'll find it and I, I actually had one of my friends who doesn't believe in this kind of stuff do that. And he said one day he was playing his game. And he had his phone sitting next to him. And then it was on the arm of the couch and he couldn't find it. And then he's he remembered the video I sent him that was kind of explaining how to do that. And he said, he just said, can I have my phone back? And then went back to playing his game. And the next time he stopped after he got off his game and looked down, his phone was right there on the arm of the chair where he had it before. He was like, (laughs) I don't know how that happened. He was like, I told you, man. (laughs) You don't even have to believe in the universe. If you just ask for it back, usually the universe will give you little things like that, you know? I actually have just something to try. I've actually had something weird like that happen to me um, because I'm on Simple Health and that's a birth control type of thing. And I Uh get it every three months. And this was the time where I read up and it was supposed to come to me. And I had got, already gotten the package and Curtis had handed it to me while I was doing laundry. So I forgot it in the laundry room and it wasn't there anymore. I couldn't find it around in the house. So I knew it wasn't anywhere in here mm-hmm. and I was freaking out. And then I just took a deep breath and I'm like, please, please, please. I need this back. Please. Can I just have this back? Not even knowing mm-hmm. why I was saying it. I was just screaming out to the world please let me get this back Mm -hmm. and then when Curtis went to go and pay the rent last week um the package was just there they handed it off to him and then he came up and handed it to me and I damn near freaking cried (laughs) (laughs) yep yep at that point you just say thank you universe (laughs) it's like I I know no one in the in this uh cul-de-sac is like kind enough to just grab it and take it back to the front I know we have a security officer but she was on her off day and she wasn't Uh and she wasn't walking around that day so I knew it wasn't her I knew it wasn't the custodians I so I don't know what happened but I was just grateful that I had it I was just grateful it came back to me because Jesus Christ like yeah that that's for the next 90 days I can't have that go missing (laughs) yeah no kidding holy crap yeah definitely you needed that yeah Yeah. just practice that I guess leave with ending words on that practice asking things asking for things from the universe they tend to give it to you if you ask nicely yes practice asking things from the universe is a nice way to start off and just baby steps baby 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 steps but on that note we will end it today because this has been a lovely chat and I do believe if Mm -hmm. we go any further it's just going to be repeating ourselves but thank you so much Amani for being on again yeah this was lovely as usual thank you so awesome (laughs) yes thank you for having me
And as I said to you guys, everything will be down below in the description. But thank you guys again. And don't forget to stay healthy, stay safe, stay lovely, and stay loony. And there you have it. Another wonderful episode chatted up. I know religion is a very difficult subject to want to talk about and to have to deal with, but we wanted to make sure that everything that we felt about it was still very unbiasedly spoken on. I do understand that it is a very touchy subject as well for some, but I would love to know your own religious paths and how you've found your way because we all have a stake in this world we all have things that we're curious about and we all have journeys that we are completing have completed or are just about to start and i just want everyone out there to truly remember that thank you guys so much again for being around for this episode and please don't forget to follow me on my socials they'll be down in the description below along with the lovely miss amani's but please, everyone, don't forget to stay healthy, stay safe, stay lovely, and stay loony. I'll see you guys next episode.